His claim to Meridian is that he graduated from Meridian High School in 1919. And uh, his father was a clothier, ran a clothing store. His mother was one of the Howard family that was a long time Meridian family. But after he graduated, the family moved to New Orleans and Howard joined the Navy as an enlisted man and spent about 18 months uh, in the Navy. And uh, he got involved with competitive testing and wound up receiving an appointment to Annapolis, which was sort of a, a big step for a little boy from uh, Meridian, Mississippi. But uh, Howard uh, was born actually in Selma, Alabama in 1902, although his family lived here in Selma and eventually in New Orleans and then uh, in Tennessee. But the father moved around a good bit. Well, I got interested in Howard Gilmore while I was still, I guess I think I was in junior college that year, and the Wildcat uh, published an edition. I think it. I think it was during the summer, but I don't know. I haven't been able to find it because the the uh, Wildcat doesn't keep a uh, a file of their things. I wish they did. But it was on the front page of the Wildcat that issue, and it was a poem. It was a poem that started off to the luster of the Navy, add another shining name, place Commander Howard Gilmore in the Navy's Hall of Fame, and it went on down the line. But I could remember those first two lines of the poem. <laughs> And I, I got here at the archive, I said, you know, I wish I knew more about this guy. It, it would be interesting to have something. Well, <laughs> that, those words turned, uh, turned Ward loose on it with the computer. He started delving into search engines and everything. The first, first thing he knew, we had the name of the submarine, the Growler. Uh, we had the, uh, the incident. And we had some dates when all of this happened. Commander Gilmore had been out in the Pacific as commander of a submarine. He got into a fight with a Japanese gunboat. This was on the surface, where in a sense a submarine is almost at the mercy of other things. I mean, a submarine is safe when it's down in the water deep. And he'd gotten into a fight with this thing. The other, the gunboat tried to ram him. It was in the middle of the night, dark of the night, and here's the crash of guns and the, uh, everything around him. And uh, they're try trying to shoot at the submarine, but all they have is 30 caliber. The submarine, uh, the gunboat had a 50 caliber, and they also had a three, small three inch gun on there, which they were desperately trying to bring to bear on the submarine. And they're trying to ram the submarine. He turned the submarine around and actually succeeded in ramming the gunboat. And I thought it was, they thought at the time that was very successful. He said he burst her plates open and he left her in a sinking condition. The only trouble is while she was ill in a sinking condition, they were still spraying the deck of that uh, submarine with bullets. They, they killed two of the, of the uh, uh, crew on the bridge on the outside of it, wounded another one or two, and they also wounded Captain Gilmore, uh, Commander Gilmore, very seriously. And so he had already said, clear the bridge. That means everybody get in and get out. And everybody did, except Gilmore. He, he could only drag himself a little bit, I don't know. He was, he, he was, I think he was mortally wounded already, but he was still in command of the vessel. And so when the last man got down, he gave his final command, take her down. And they dived. They, 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 they waited a, a couple, few seconds. And then the, the uh, second in command, who was stunned from falling down the, uh, the conning tower part of the time, uh, he says, okay, let's take her down. And they closed it up tight and they dove, leaving Commander Gilmore on top. When they came up, after waiting to see if there was going to be any depth charging and anything like that. When they came up, I think maybe a couple of hours later, there wasn't anything. The sea was vacant. No gunboat. No captain, no commander Gilmore. And so in the sense he had given his life to save his ship, to save his crew. And for that he was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor.
the first submariner in World War II to receive a Congressional Medal of Honor. 